Welcome to this Diff Blue webinar on how artificial intelligence can help enhance shift left. My name is Matthew Lodge. I'm the CEO at Diff Blue. My background is in product development. I have 25 years uh, plus experience in the industry, starting out as a software developer and moving through product and uh, marketing roles in the technology industry. And I was previously SVP of product at Anaconda and uh, VP of cloud services at VMware. Let's talk about shift left. For the purposes of this webinar, we're going to talk about the idea that shift left is doing more testing sooner in the software development lifecycle. So in this chart you can see here that we found on Devopedia, shift left is about test early and test often, as opposed to the traditional quality model, which really comes from the waterfall world, where testing takes place much later in the cycle. And essentially, shift left is something that's very similar to uh, testing methodologies and testing theories and quality theories that really came out of the manufacturing world, so physical manufacturing, uh, and the idea that you wanted to find defects as quickly as possible uh, before uh, they got further and further into the production uh, pipeline, a production cycle. Uh, because they were much more expensive to fix later on. Well, it turns out the same is true for software. And so shift left is the same idea, test early and test often. So without shift left, then what happens in uh, pipelines, so modern continuous integration, continuous delivery pipelines, uh, without shift left, then essentially what happens is that bugs uh, don't get caught early, and therefore they cause breakages or failures in the code uh, later on in the pipeline. And because they happen later on, then the time taken to find and fix those errors uh, dramatically increases. And so you can think about the idea of you know, a bug that could have been caught uh, early in perhaps unit testing. Uh, if it is uh, then that causes a breakage later on after integration tests, well, the original developer has probably moved on to their next task. So now, to figure out why this code is breaking or uh, failing its uh, integration tests, now the developer needs to stop what they're currently working on, context switch back to that piece of code, try and figure out what the source of the failure is, you know, write uh, a change for that and submit it, and then kind of switch back to their new task. Um, and so as a result, that's why it takes longer. That's where that time comes from. Some of it is context switching, and, and it's, it's just much more difficult. The, the finding, being able to triage and figure out what caused the failure is much harder later on in the cycle versus earlier on where you've got a single commit for a developer, and with a unit test, you can find a failure right away. Uh, also, some of the tests that run later in the cycle just take a lot longer to run. Uh, so they might be full end-to-end -end tests that uh, you know, simulate the production environment, for example. Uh, or they may be the production environment itself, in which case you might have a failure after you've deployed. Uh, and those obviously are very expensive. So the idea of shift left is that it looks pretty easy, right? So you're going to be running unit tests after every single commit. And the idea is to be able to find uh, most of the logic bugs that have to do with uh, the individual code in each unit. Uh, and you want to be able to identify those bugs and those regressions as quickly as possible as part of that commit cycle. So it's an you know, automated test that can run right away to test a commit before it gets, uh, test a branch before it goes into the full main line. Uh, and then integration tests later on you know, catch integration issues separate from logic of individual units, but how do all of those things come together? So that sounds great in theory. But uh, we recently did a developer survey because we've, we've seen in our customer base and uh, the companies that we talk to and the developers we talk to um, that a lot of organizations find it very difficult indeed to get good unit test coverage. Uh, so we recently did a survey, uh, over 300 uh, developers uh, in the US and the UK, uh, and they spent about 20% of their time writing unit tests, which is quite a high uh, amount. And uh, given that they spend about 35% writing new code, 48% um, of developers found it very hard to meet the unit test coverage requirements that have been set by their organizations. It is just difficult uh, to write that level of tests. 
and 42% of developers have skipped writing unit tests in order to speed up development. So in other words, they've essentially traded off time spent uh, writing those tests in order to meet the goals and the timelines of the organization. And 33% of developers wish they didn't have to write unit tests at all. And that one's uh, not too surprising. If you think about it, you know, writing unit tests is uh, it's very detailed, it's uh, somewhat boring uh, and repetitive in some ways. Uh, and those kinds of tasks, uh, you know, the human brain finds uh, difficult to do, right? Our attention wanders uh, and it is, you know, just mentally difficult maintaining uh, concentration on that sort, of, uh, that sort of challenge. So writing these tests in the first place is quite difficult, which is why a lot of organizations kind of run into trouble with that. And so one of the things that AI is now capable of doing is writing these shift left tests from existing code. So the idea is that you can analyze the existing code of the application and then AI is able to write a set of tests that reflect the current logic. So these are unit tests, they're not end-to-end -end tests or integration tests, they're just unit tests. But essentially what they do is they capture the current behavior of the application. And so the idea is that you can run these tests and they uh, get good coverage in the sense that they put inputs into those methods uh, that will follow the different branches and the control flow uh, of the method and that they will also check the result that comes back from the method. So it's not just about did we hit all the lines, but did we test the answer that came back and is it the correct answer? Uh, so AI is capable of uh, doing this today. And as a result, you get tests that run quickly uh, and can find regressions. And they find regressions because they capture the current behavior. Right? So new uh, behavior will deviate from the logic of the, uh, the previous uh, code. Uh, and that's how you would find those regressions. Uh, and of course, they can improve your coverage. And the idea is that they're also easy to understand. So they should be simple enough in their construct uh, that a developer can look at a failing test and understand what it's doing very quickly, and then go figure out uh, what the problem is. And so the whole idea here is not to produce perfect tests, um, because AI you know, just fundamentally doesn't have the capability to, to do that without all it understands is the code. It doesn't understand the intent of the programmer. It doesn't understand what the user stories are or anything like that. All it knows is the current code. But as Martin Fowler said uh, back in 2006 when he was talking about continuous integration, you know, imperfect tests run frequently are much better than perfect tests that are never written at all. And if our developer survey is correct, then you know, they, a lot of these tests are never written at all. So what does it look like? Uh, so I wanted to make this very concrete. So here's an example of an AI written test. That's on the right hand side. So on the left hand side here, we have the source code, the Java method. This is a tic-tac-toe or noughts and crosses if you prefer, if you're British like me. Um, and so we've got some Java code and uh, it plays tic-tac-toe and we're just looking here at a method that is used to check uh, to see if one of the players has won. And so you can see the logic on the left-hand side there where you're looking at the board and the rows and columns in the board to see if a particular player has won. And so this is a test uh, to check uh, to see if someone has won by getting a column uh, of their uh, symbol, their naught or their cross. And so what the AI is able to do is essentially analyze that program, understand the control and the data flow so we're looking, at, we're looking at the reachability and we're looking at the uh, result that is generated and essentially work backwards from those in order to construct a test that will exercise that code. And so you can see on the right-hand side, the AI has put together uh, a board. So you can see it creating uh, these arrays of integers. That, that's the representation used by the program for the board. And uh, it's put together a board that has a single column uh, that is a winner for player two. And then it feeds that into the method and checks the results. So it asserts uh, that player two is one, you can see there. And so this is a good example of how AI can help you generate unit tests that reflect current behavior. Now, the important thing to note about this is that it is not gonna 
catch uh, errors of logic, right? Because all of the AI knows is the current code. It doesn't know if that code is correct. But if we assume that the code is correct, as it will be for most of, uh, most of the time, um, and we assume that over time, you know, errors in logic uh, are uh, fixed, right? So the, uh, the AI can basically work from a, you know, the sort of best uh, working copy of the program. Then what that does is it enables the AI to write a test that reflects the current logic. And therefore, if the test breaks, then it means one of two things. So it means either that there's been a deliberate change to the logic of a function, so now it has to do something differently, or it means that a regression has been introduced. And so the developer can look at the failing test and essentially make the call. Either the test is failing because there's been a deliberate change in the functionality and because the test reflects the old functionality, that's why it failed. Or the test is failing because the program has inadvertently introduced a regression, in which case they can go fix their code uh, and the test will pass and, and on they go. And then the software is able to regenerate tests based on the new updated code. Once it has passed through all of the tests, uh, uh, it can and automatically regenerate that. So AI can help uh, shift left in uh, two different areas. For, for software developers, it can improve the velocity and the quality of the code, right? So it's generating essentially a, an automatic set of suite of tests that is updated directly by the AI, and therefore it allows the developer to spend more time on the things that only they can do, um, and uh, it improves the quality, catches more regressions. And then for the DevOps team, you know, catching areas, uh, errors rather earlier is going to help them with shift left. It's going to help you find more problems early on in the pipeline when they're quick to fix and cheaper to fix, and that will help you improve your deployment frequency your lead time and mean time to recovery. So hopefully this was useful for you. This is uh, the role of AI in shift left testing. My name's Matthew Lodge. Thanks very much for your time and your attention.